JBN, we keep you informed. All the to all my viewers and subscribers, it's a girl, Miss JBN. Coming to you with a new segment of JBN News. Name, Reason With Me. In this segment, I'll be stating my opinion on a current issue that has touched the heart of every Jamaican. And in this issue, I'll be asking the question, what type of parent are you? But before I go any further, if you have not yet subscribed, please take this opportunity to do so. If you have, leave me a comment at the end and make sure you click the notification bell so you can receive our daily news items. Now, everybody is aware of the Shante Skyers story, the beautiful eight-year-old girl from Sterling Castle Heights, a student of Red Hills Primary School that went missing for five days and then was found murdered, buried under rubbish in a place named Blue Hole. Now, from the pictures that I've seen, I've been asking myself and other people, why is it that a little eight-year-old girl will be walking through those bushes? As one person said in their comment through the jungle. Now the grandmother said that Shante did not come home. And she went to the police station to make a report the night. And when she went there, they asked her for a photograph. And she had a photograph on her phone. And the policeman told her that she had to go over to the pharmacy to get a copy of it so they could have it. But I think when she went there, the pharmacy was closed. I don't remember exactly what happened, but she went home. And the question I asked now, if Shanti is a little girl that normally comes home, when the grandmother went home, what did she do? Go to bed? She said she got up early the next morning and she went to the to Shanti's school, Red Hills Primary, and spoke to Shanti's teacher. And when the teacher started to cry, she realized that it was serious. Now, if the picnic not come home, none at all, and a picnic has come home, it's serious when the child not reach home. I you go to school the next man and also when the teacher start crying, I can't say that serious. Serious lady, me look for you, you know, so old. That you're supposed to lose your reasoning. But I ask the question though, why is it that a little girl at that age, or anybody for that matter, any female for that matter, any picnic for that matter, should be walking through those bushes unaccompanied by an, a responsible adult? I would not allow my child to even go to the road to take a taxi by himself and let me know the taxi that they are going into. Why is it that as parents, whenever things happen, we pass the blame onto somebody else instead of ac accepting the responsibility? The father said that maybe his child would have been found alive if the police were more proactive. But your child would have been alive if somebody went to school and picked her up. Even if you don't have a car, you have a bicycle or a walk, you walk. On a rainy day, you allow this little girl to come home by herself. And then when she's found, unfortunately dead, you're going to blame somebody else. Because you did something wrong. Why is it that as a community, because I know there will be a lot of children in that community going to that school, or even if it's two or three, why is it that as a community, if the father is working, the grandmother have to work, there must be at least one other person as a child going to school there that is not working. And so come together and say, listen, I feel responsibility to me. You're going to you're you're take a pick up and pick them at even time and walk with them through them bush there. No, some of them bush there. Wanted man up there, no? Because sometimes when some man commits some crime, they go up in a damn bush to cool out. And you're allowed a little baby girl. She was, she not, she, she's not a fat girl to fight off somebody. And even when they're fat, most of the time they can't even fight off anybody. But she was so slim. And you're allowed her to walk home and now you're going to pass and the blame to somebody else. That listen, if you don't do this, or if you don't do that. If you just simply pick up the picnic and get somebody responsible for pick up the picnic, the child would, be in a life, would have been alive today. So stop blaming people. Let us stop blaming people as, as adults. Be more responsible for our children. Because they are our responsibility. They are not the government's responsibility. Yes, the government must do things to make sure that as citizens of the country, we are living a certain way. But it is not the government's responsibility. It is our responsibility as a parent. To make sure that our children are safe. And there are things that we need to do as parents to talk to our children, discuss it with them. Make sure that our children are safe because they are our responsibility. Not the police, not the member of parliament, not the councillor, not the prime minister. Are full with them. We care them come here. We're responsible if we take care of them. Until they reach the age when you say, all right, you can't bench up on your own. You're done university, you're done college, or you're done your trade. Because then everybody can't take university or college education. You're done your trade and you say, all right, I, I, am, I am happy. I did the best job that I could. If somebody had just gone to pick this child up. You know, I've seen a lot of children from they reach grade one. When parents decide, say, make put you go on, man. Put you go to school. Put you, put you have sense. Put you know off go to school and put you off come back home. I would say the seven-year-old, the eight-year-old, the nine, the ten. Here will pick the gun at school by themselves. We send them out a road if you go take bus, or if you go take taxi, or if you walk. 
sometimes the school is a full change from us now, but somehow we're so lazy that we can't even walk our child to school. We know what time school over, we don't even see the, 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 the be responsible or see the, the, how important it is to go, to go pick up a picnic and carry them back home. And then when something happens, we we'll come on social media, come cry with them on TV and ball. And if we had just done what we we're supposed to do, our children would have been safe. You know, we need to teach our children certain things. We need to teach them to run away from danger. When you see danger, anybody will come in at their space. Anybody invade their personal space. I don't know them. I even sometimes when I know them, they must make a lamb ball out. So my owner said, ball like one girl if a son. Tell him say he must scream like a girl because somebody invaded in space, which means that in life is in danger. We need to teach our children certain things in order to protect themselves. Stop making picnic and then go places alone. You have send them go shop. You have send them go school. You have send them go fun day. And you just send them out there and say, all right, hey, your money go on. And when they're done, then for just come back out. Or you go send more one little picnic house. You have send them for a taxi if you got KFC. We're too irresponsible when things happen. We want to blame everybody else. We need to stop it. Stop making picnic and go places unsupervised. An adult, trusted adult must be there. If you are not there, a trusted adult must be there and they are responsible for them. So if anything happens, you know who you forgot to. We need to be more responsible. Know where your children are and who they are with. So now because you have one friend, you have one party, and you go pick him up, send him over there, you go send him over for sleep over, you don't even know them. You don't know if his stepfather or father are molester or even a mother a molester but you pick up your picnic and send them gone because somebody invited in my yard you need to know who your children are with and where they are talk to your picnic them about safety don't be afraid to talk to your children a lot of us we, we behave as if sometimes the children even have opinion and we say them face they don't want to hear nothing from them talk to your children stop writing picnic them name on them bag outside Five, four picnic somebody in a class of a bag and I said, listen, no one put you for no in bags here, right? Or put your full name for in bag. The class when in a him mother name, in phone number and address. You're actually setting up your child because somebody go see my call out in name and the no only thing we realize they name the pan in bag or go respond. So you're setting up your children. Stop writing their names on their bags. Let them be aware to them need to be aware of their surroundings. If your child has to take a bus or a taxi to school in the mornings. And you can do it. Make sure you have somebody responsible who is there who take a taxi man picture. Take a picture I can when going out. But you take the child to the bus stop and you make sure so then go in one vehicle where you say, listen, this is the vehicle that my child went into. They didn't come home from school. They didn't read school. But this is the vehicle that they went into. And everyone that we have car. And everyone that we have bicycle. But we have foot. How we need to use the foot and stop being so lazy sitting at home. And doing everything else apart from safeguarding our children and they want to get upset and start ball. Just recently there was a young lady, I don't remember the name of the school in Portmore, so I don't want to call any names. But the young lady was there on the compound waiting for her mother. And a man walked up to the fence and said, My mother, your mother send me. Send me for you. And look, a girl said, No, I me mean, not know you. So she started to, you know, she she wanted to she went further in on the compound. And no, so the man was brazen enough to go on the school compound for the little girl. And she ran into the school building and started to scream. Because she said, I don't know him. And my mother told me that she's not going to send anybody for me. We have to teach our children things to keep them safe. Because we don't know what predator look like. We don't know what pedophile look like. They don't have look. Because if we didn't know them, the children would have been around them. Sometimes we meet some man and we carry them in our yard. And we say, me, no man, me be a coach every day and get up in one be a poochie. And you don't know, understand so something wrong. You don't know, start looking into it and say, no man, something wrong, man. All this man just coming in my life every day and one beard milk a girl and one beard milk a son. We need to start being wise and stop allowing our children to be victims. A lot of a lot of it that is happening is our fault. No pastor in Castle then kill this man and all this insane man because they find one back on the premises. I don't think this man did it. Which madman I go kill somebody and then kill and go bury them under rubbish? That don't make no sense. So there's a possibility that the killer is still walking up and down in Sterling Castle. The brother that was there with him ran for his life. Right now he went to the police, handed over himself to the police. So he's in protective custody. Kind of listen, me afraid. I don't know who did it. But it's a possibility that the person used Miguel Williams as a scapegoat to take the attention of himself. So we have to be careful sometimes that we administer jungle justice. The man could I see back on the road somewhere that's belongs to me and take your pancake at home. It don't necessarily mean that him do it. So the possibility is that that person is still there and will strike again. But I hope to God that another child does not fall victim 
to this because it is so sad the way that little Shante died. And me hold the parents them responsible. Me hold them responsible because they should have put measures in place to make sure so the little baby girl don't come home by herself. Parents, we have to be responsible. We can't pass on the responsibility of our children to nobody else because they belong to it. They belong to it. You know what? The joy when you put the come home and you see man and grow up and you just like excel and you make you proud. You feel like you achieve and you say, yes, me pitney. And then we just didn't want more and pass on the responsibility and the job to somebody else to raise them. You know, work. And you need to stop. We need to start taking responsibility for our children. We need to safeguard our children because too many children are turning up in this country missing. And a lot of times they are not found. Where are they? Where are they? That's the question. You know, so some of them, the older ones, and we go and go with a boyfriend or somebody. But what happened to the smaller ones? Where are they? That's the question I'm asking. Where are they? And as parents, what are you doing? I know what I am doing. Me an overprotective mother. What are we doing to protect our children? Reason with, reason with me. JBN. We keep you informed.